Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk about how to study the masters and the skill set we're going to learn is head construction today. And before we begin, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free insiders email list where you'll get access to live classes like this, along with other free lessons, free videos, free content. You also get discounts on courses, programs. You get first access to upcoming premium classes, other private live streams like this. So all you have to do is go to www.drawwoodchris.com. And there you can enter your email and you'll be a part of the insider's email list. You can also go to downloads and see some of the free content and lessons available. I have figure drawing, head drawing, color. You can even access the private Discord community. So go to drawwoodchris.com and there you can enter your email and you'll be all set. You'll be good to go. So what are we actually learning here? What we are learning is a form of academic realism from Europe. We're learning the American branch of it, specifically the West Coast of America, the uh, Hollywood, Los Angeles branch of this type of realism. But essentially the process has remained unchanged. And the process really involves the learning side of it, how it's taught. We draw from observation. And that's generally from models, real life models, plasters, which are sculptures, and part of the training is we copy master artist. Now, of course, you have probably heard this many, many times, but there are ways to do it more effectively than merely just sitting down and blindly copying. You want to be very thoughtful about it, and there is a process to it, so we'll talk about that today. But in essence, really what, what we're trying to do here is learn from an expert. And not only an expert, a historically great, typically, historically great expert. And that opportunity is quite rare. It's very, very rare. Meeting a, an expert, a living one in modern times, in, in right, right now, is very, very rare. There's not many of them in every generation. Even now, there's just so few of them in, in this field that we're after, realistic head drawing, realistic art. There's not that many of them. So when we have a chance to learn from an expert, and if we do it properly, if we do it with thought and care, we can dramatically improve or grow as artists. We can learn a skill very, very quickly if you take it seriously and you take it with depth and skill. So that's what we're going to learn today. Because one, one or two small ideas from an expert can literally change your life. That's what happened to me. I was... Um, like most of you, you were probably drawing as a kid like me. I love to draw as a kid. I love to draw superheroes and characters. And, uh, you know, for me, uh, my generation was He-Mans. I like to draw He-Mans and Ninja Turtles and Transformers. And later I drew Street Fighter characters. So I'm just like every young, young kid, young boy, I like to draw superheroes and things. And, uh, you know, I went through life doing that kind of drawing on my own and just having fun, not taking it too seriously. And then it wasn't until I, um, I tried to make some money <laughs> at art, I tried to cross over from amateur to professional. That's when I got hit in the face with the cold, hard reality that, hey, there's some things that I'm missing. <laughs> there's some things that I'm missing. To go from here, amateur, whoop, to professional. And for me, this was video game concept artist. That was, that was my big goal. I wanted to be a concept artist on Street Fighter, right? <laughs> that was my, my dream goal, but it never happened. So to go from here, there's a huge gap actually <laughs> for me. One of the ways that I closed this gap 
was that I, I moved out of my comfort zone. I left my hometown, my small hometown. I moved to the big city in Hollywood, and I spent time with experts. And experts shared with me, literally, it was only one or two things that I learned. One of them was that the one thing that really shocked me was that the shadow has a shape. I didn't know that. <laughs> it sounds so simple, and many of you know that now, but I didn't know it when I was 19, 20, or 21, or wherever I started this journey. So just that alone literally transformed my life forever. Without this little nugget of information, I wouldn't sit, be sitting here right now. So let's go look at some experts from history. Most of these artists, they're passed away now. We, we won't be able to meet them in person. But I will show you how you can learn as much as you can from them, from their work, specifically in terms of head drawing today. So that's just a brief overview of what we're doing and why it's important and why you want to treat this with a lot of respect. I treat this with a lot of respect because, like I said, um, my whole philosophy in life, one of the core principles in my life that I've always carried with me, especially since this journey, is that to get where I want to go in life, to learn something valuable in life, one of the most direct ways is to just spend time with an expert, ask them good questions, and learn from them as much as possible. They can really fast track things for you. So let's do that now. So in realistic head drawing, There's a handful of subsets, subskills, shapes, construction, So there's a there's 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 a bunch of things we have to we have to understand, but generally these two are the beginning. We have to understand that there is a clear shape to everything, and then we have to understand that these shapes, if we want them to feel 3D, eventually we have to turn our shapes into construction forms. In other words, we have to turn a square into a box or a circle, an egg or a globe or a triangle, into a cone or a square, or it can also become a cylinder. So these are construction forms. You know, they, they come in many sizes and shapes and variations. They don't have to be perfect geometry. This is a very, very brief overview of the academic drawing, realistic head drawing skill set, at least the first two that we need. And this is not new. I didn't invent this. You know, I, I am just handing down the long tradition uh, to you. <laughs> and as you pick up the tradition, you will also hand it down to someone else. So that is really what we're after today. And then we'll also touch a little bit on anatomy as well, because that's quite important. Okay, what we're gonna do first is look at construction by studying some masters. So I'm gonna, I just got a folder here. And remember, what is construction? We have to essentially turn a square into a box or create the illusion of a box. Box, 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 box. We're basically turning an organic thing into a box. Now, that, that is not easy. <laughs> but the beautiful thing is 
these guys have already figured it out. <laughs> They've already figured it out. It's just up to us to do some investigating and go, okay, how, how did they do it? Not only they figured it out, they figured it out in a way that is so good and so historically good that their work, what they've accomplished, will live on essentially forever. Essentially forever. This is essentially the height, the height of human achievement in this field. So, yeah, it's a piece of cake. Well, you know, if you can appreciate once you understand how important it is, this part of the process, and just how valuable this information is, all you need to know is how to, how to investigate properly, and then uh, you're good. You'll learn these skills as well. So what we're learning now, what we're learning now, let's start with construction, the box. How do we turn an organic complex form like a human face into a box? Let's take a look at that. These guys have already figured out. So what I do is when you look at great works of art, obviously Sargent here we're starting with. Also look at Cornwell. What you want to do is go, okay, of these faces, which one which ones look very boxy? Now I've already sorted, I've already picked these out. So these, I, were, I already went through a series of sergeants and made these decisions looking at which ones are boxy. Uh, so they're all quite good. Here's one very famous gondolier by Sargent. We take a look at the gondolier by Sargent here. Comment below, do you see the clear box? I sure do. Let's take a look at one easy way to see is this beautiful corner, the corner from the front of the face to the side. And you can see it's clearly in shadow, the way it's lit clearly defines the box. So this is a great one to study. Let's pull this out. What else? What else do we see boxy? This one I called out earlier. I don't know who this man is. Do you see the box in his face? I do. It's almost exactly the same lighting scenario as the gondolier man, but a little bit more subtle. So this would be a great one to study. You see how the front of his face is very bright. You can see the intensity of the highlight here. And then as it turns away to the forehead and then to the side of his forehead, boom, you see that, that, that darker tone that is the box. Steve Houston calls it box modeling. That's a great one to study. Let's look at a female. And let's see if uh, his female heads have the boxy feel. This one's in light. Does this one have a boxy feel? It does. It's a bit more subtle. It's a bit more subtle. But on the side plane, you can definitely see typically the core shadow right here in the side plane, that, that little bit of shadow, you see how it goes from shadow to not shadow, front of the face, the side of the place, that's, that's a box. In light, it's a bit more subtle. This is in light, the zone here. It's there, but it's a bit more subtle. It takes a bit more, a bit more of an eye to look at. So we'll take a look at that. Let's take a look at another great master of head drawing the great Dean Cornwell. These heads are kind of small resolution. So when we look at a folder of Dean Cornwell, and uh, I already picked these out sort of. When you look, ask yourself, okay, what am I learning today? Today we're learning construction. What is construction? Essentially turning a face into a box, an organic thing into a box. Which one of these things, which one of these beautiful images does that? Is it obvious? Start with what's obvious and clear. Okay, this one grabs my attention right away. She's quite boxy. And the forehead. I like that. There's a little bit of, um, that's kind of a strange drawing now that I think about it on the side of the plane. So that's quite, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can find one more obvious. Oh, here's one very obvious. You see this one? You see this one right here? You see that beautiful shadow on the side there? That's very, very clear. So that'd be a good one to study. 
I like this one. This one's low resolution. His this man's head is literally a box in shape. It's a square in shape, then he made it a cube. This would be a good one to study. I really like this one. From Cornwell. Then let's see if we can find a see if we can find a female. This one is very nice, very clear. And then we'll look to one more. We'll look to a modern artist who happens to still be alive, thank goodness. And I really love this man's work. What makes John Asaro special is um, he is one of the last living first generation Frank Riley students. I believe he's 77 now, almost in his 80s. And he actually took class from the great Frank Riley himself first-hand knowledge of Frank Riley's teaching, and he's still alive, and um, very, 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 very valuable information in this man's head. He used to teach, but he's retired from teaching, but we can study from his work. You can see the clear Riley uh, method in his work. For example, this diagram right here, you can see the box modeling that's essentially illustrative Riley method, the shadow shape, that's essentially Riley method. This one jumps out at me, it's super boxy. In light, we're gonna look at that. Oh, I love this one. It's not super boxy on the light side, but it's very clear. This one right here, you see the obvious shadow. That is hardcore Riley method all the way. Riley method, um, one of the ways that you can spot Riley method is this strong dominance of spotlighting where the, the light and shadow shape and the border and the coarse shadow is very, very, very strong. Very strong, and this is an example of it. You can see very, very boxy. So let's take a look at that. And let's see if we can find a male. You see very clear and boxy right there. Wow, this is a beautiful male head. Ah, this is ah, it's incredible. <laughs> you know, this is the first time I've actually like sat and stared at this work. It's unbelievable. Okay, so we got a nice collection here. That's what I look for when I look at masterworks. I first think about what it is I want to learn, and then when I look at an old master's work, I try to see which one of their pieces clearly demonstrates what I want. For example, we're learning construction. This one is obvious, very strong, fetching here. This one, it has it, but not as obvious. So maybe we'll look at this one as well. So one of the things that um, is a really useful exercise, a way to study, is to trace. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the box. We're going to look for this. We're going to look for the box. And here it's quite, it's quite obvious. Let me get a, it's quite obvious here. If we follow his eyebrow, that in itself is a box actually. If we follow his eyebrow, the eyebrow changes direction. That corner, we know, if we follow that up, You can see it's light here, it's light here, shadow here, so that corner is the box of the face. F where the front, your face, a human face, it's round, but it is still quite boxy. And as realists, we want to see the face as boxy, and that's exactly what these experts have done. And he has done it quite masterfully for us. You can see if we follow the shadow, in this case, the shadow is our biggest clue. Follow it down. Light, 
shadow, light, shadow, right? Follow that over, follow that down, follow that line. Oh, there you go. There you go. So it's not, it's not like that. It's not like that, like that, but it is a human being. So it is more, has more nuance, has more bumps, but it's, in essence is a box. What else? Where else does he show boxiness? You can't really see it, but the top of, if we follow the side contour, where the side contour ends is at the hairline, right? Or where the front of the face typically ends at the hairline. Here, you can't really see it, but that is a corner as well. That is a corner as well. Wherever the hairline, the hairline will eventually is the border of your face and the top of your head because the top of your head is also a box. Box. What else? What about his nose? You see how his nose, this in terms of shadow, there's not quite different, but it's there. In fact, he drew a bit of coarse shadow. You see these little nuggets, little nuggets of accents. What he's saying is, oh, follow this so that you will draw a box for me. So he's not literally drawing a box like that. Of course, he's using more sophistication, which is eventually where, where we want to end up in our finished work. But we first have to understand what we want to communicate in order for us to even get to this point. So there it is right there, a box. The brow is a box. Boom, boom. See that corner change? Very clear, very clear. Obviously, the it's not as clear here because we can't see. We're looking above him. Our eye level is above him, so we can't see the underplane of his chin. But that is also a box. It's the underside of the box. So you can see that this is drawn, or it's a painting, but it's drawn in line with the academic model, the academic realist model of box construction. So it's very, uh, very useful for us to study and copy this. And then, of course, the next step would be to copy the construction of his drawing. So we're not going to do that now. That's exactly what I would do next. In fact, you could even continue to trace if that's helpful. Well, in fact, let's, let's do that now. So we did an analysis. What I'd like to do now is continue to trace the construction. I'm going to keep my tracing paper on the original and see if we can learn construction from Sargent. Of course we can. He <laughs> has done this himself. And you can just see how, how pretty and clean his construction is once you uh, study and analyze it. Now, we can't see the top, so we're going to have to use our imagination. And he actually drew it for you. Actually, if you stop and look, let's quickly take a look at how he drew it for us. So this is probably... Um, it's, it's, it's not the highest res image, but you see this little nugget of line right here, or these little marks. I don't know if you can see them. See them right here where my cursor is. You see the the way if we follow these these are brush strokes. He, I don't know if they were fully conscious. He's like, okay, I'm gonna st stroke this way to help you draw help you draw, meaning help us, the viewer, draw for us. He's helping the viewer draw the construction of the head, the top of the head, through the dark hat. You see that? That line right there. It's not perfectly where it should be, but it's close enough to get us in the zone of naturalism. So you see? And again, this is the difference between an expert and an amateur. An ex expert understands that you don't literally need to draw a line every time to communicate something. You can suggest something and allow the audience, the viewer, to fill in the drawing for you. That is a big leap in skill. So this, again, it seems so insignificant 
This little tiny little brush mark seems so insignificant to the untrained eye. But once you understand the value of paying very close attention to these minute marks, you will see that if you internalize this and if you apply this in your work, your work will take on the qualities of an expert. And this is one of the historically great experts of history. That is why that little mark is so important. I hope I get my point across here is that um, there is so much value from doing these if you know what you're looking for and if you fully appreciate and understand the process. So I'm basically going through the construction model, which is essentially a modified Loomis model, you know, my interpretation of the Loomis model, but it's essentially <laughs> Nothing new. The Loomis model is uh, is the American interpretation or refinement of the European construction model. So they most likely learned it from the great masters at the Ecole des Beaux Arts in Paris. Guys like Bridgman went over there to name a few. Americans like Bridgman went, went to the Echo de Beaux Arts. They learned this body of knowledge, this European realism, and then they brought it back to America, specifically New York. Notice the drawing of the neck as a cylinder. The neck isn't flat, it's a cylinder. So that is a uh, tracing study of the construction of this particular sergeant. Of course, I can refine it even more, demonstrate the boxiness even more by adding a bit of tone at the original here and interpreting. And if we look at the uh, just the forms in the shadow, you can see that uh, yeah, it's quite successful. It's obviously uh, very sloppy, the tones I put, I put down, but you can see now we have this in our memory. We have this in our toolbox. The next time we draw a male in this lighting, in this position, we can apply what we just learned in this moment. We can apply this sergeant model in this moment. So that is wonderful. We have just learned construction from a historically great expert. So that is great. Let's, let's keep going. The thing I like about Dean Cornwell is that he makes his construction very obvious. Very obvious. If you know what you're looking for, you can see it. And this man's face is literally a box. It's super boxy. In fact, if you look at his shape, if I just draw a contour around the shape, look how boxy he made his face. And that is not an accident. That is one of the hallmarks of Dean Cornwell, is that he makes his construction quite clear, it kind of hits you on the head with it and says, you know what, this is the way that I draw, so you're going to have to live with it, uh, deal with it. <laughs> if it's too boxy for you, uh, I don't care. You see how 
square his face is. So that is perfect. Perfect for us. All right. Let's look at any box. Well, there's a corner here. Very obvious. There's a corner here. There's a corner here. Clearly a corner at his chin. Clearly a corner at his other side of his chin. If we follow his jawline, that's one of the edges of the box. The back of his head is almost a perfect straight. That is crazy. So if we, if we follow that down, of course, it'll lead to that. So where is this stuff? That is the magic. We need the construction inside, right? We got the shape. We have the shape. Remember, shape. In the academic process, the first two parts of construction is turning a box, a square, into a, a cube. Where is the corner? We need corners to make a cube. Where is the corner? Well, you guys see an obvious one in his hair? Do you see it? There's an obvious in his hair. You see it? Oh, yeah. You see this little chunk of light or whatever that is? That is not an accident, my friends. That is a straight up corner line description. What about down here? Well, you see the eyebrow change direction. The eyebrow changing direction is an easy corner to find. How does he get you from here to here? Oh, easy. You can literally draw the line, but he, he wants to make sure that you know he's making a boxy head for you. He literally draws the corner of the bangs of this man's hair and there's a point there's another point right here of his hairline so one two three points is that enough for you to get it it should be so let's keep going here let's follow that corner down what about on his face that's a tricky remember on the gondolier man the sergeant the shadow Made it very clear for us. Is it clear here? Kind of yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Well, there's one clue, which is this little light shape right there. That's one clue. The edge of that light shape and the corner of the brow. That's one way. There's a little underplane here. You see that little shadow shape there? Half tone shape. That's a corner. That top of that shape is a corner. And where it ends is a corner. Now, how does he get you from here to the mouth and the chin? Well, the chin, there's a little light shape here at the chin. There's a little uh, corner of the mouth here. So we can make the conclusion that, that is the bottom of that box. And then we can literally draw the rest here. But just to make sure, he puts brush strokes in that direction. I don't know if you can see them. Let's look up close. So do you see the stroke? You see the stroke right here? This little shape that I'm drawing right here? You notice he didn't make that stroke go this way. He didn't make that stroke in a circle. He made that stroke very, uh, uh. You see that? Straight, 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 straight. What he's saying is, I'm drawing this line for you. So you can draw it with your mind. He's teaching you how to interpret his work. There's the corner, the magic corner that we wanted. What else? Does the brow give us the corner? Of course, that's an easy one. Does the nose give us a corner? Is, is the nose boxy? It, it sure is. Look at this beautiful highlight. Is that highlight not clear enough for you to draw a line right through it? it sure is. That is the corner of the box, the edge of the nose. It's not that clear, but it's not that important because as long as we see the nostril and the bottom of the nostril, that's enough for the box. And we know the nostril leads into the tear duct. So that's enough for us to draw the box. The corner of the brow leads into the tear duct. So that draws, finishes the box there. Then you, we can box up the lips if we wanted. The jaw as it rides upward into the box of the head. The hairline is hidden. But if we follow this corner right here, if we follow that logically over, because it must 
It's like a box. It must follow the laws of perspective. And these perspective lines are kind of going this way. Therefore, this perspective line must go that way. It's the same box. So we can just logically draw that line with perspective. And there's also a corner in the hair. That's another clue. So we can just logically draw from one corner to the other to create this specific corner, boom, of his hairline. So you see, now we've done an analysis. We can literally draw this just like we did with the sergeant. I would do the exact same thing and trace over it, trace over the construction drawing. And then you will have this construction model by the great Dean Cornwell in your memory bank now. You will have this. Okay, we have the great John Asaro. Like I mentioned, Asaro, fortunately, still alive. And um, one of the great representatives of American realism. And specifically, the American illustrative tradition, which is what where I come from, what, what we're learning. Here's my little box sketch. Can we learn the box from the great sorrow? Of course we can. Okay, comment below. What are some obvious corners that we can see? We're looking for the magic corner right there. We, we, we know the side of the face. That's the edge of the box. We can see the jawline. But what is the magic corner? Let's put some clues together first. What do we see? What's obvious? Well, the hairline is an obvious clue. That is super straight. You guys see how straight the hairline is? And the hairline, does it change direction? Does the hairline change direction? Of course it does. Every direction change makes a corner. Okay, so that's one corner we have. What else? The eyebrow, we know that's a go-to. We know the eyebrow is a go-to. Easy to, for us to see. Eyebrow is typically straight in the front, and then it changes direction. Boom. And guess what? We're right there. So we can literally just draw this line to have our first corner. But does John Asaro make it easy for us? Of course he does. How? Look at the drawing of the highlight. Notice the highlight shape. There's his highlight, right? That big brush stroke. Notice the shape of it. Is it a circle? Is it a blobby no shape? Or is it quite boxy? Look at that stroke. You see it? Do you see it? Do you see that brush stroke? What he did was he either went, he put the brush, he touched the brush down here and went up or vice versa. He might have went up. He made. He started here and then went up with a flat brush. Looks like a flat brush, perhaps. You see that? See that stroke? You follow it. Light. You see these three dots? Brush stroke, brush stroke, brush stroke, brush stroke. You see that? We just follow it. There it is. So it's another example where this brilliant man is teaching you how to interpret his work and how you can also put that in your drawing. Now the cheek. We got to get from the brow to the cheek to the chin. How do we get there? Well, let's look at the bottom first. This one's a little tricky. The cheek is very, very round. Very round. In this case, it's quite round. So we need to interpret the corner of the box. So I'm just going to make a guess at this corner here. This one is a bit more obvious if I use the apex of the curve. But here, I'm using a little bit of the shadow shape. That's called the apex right there. The apex of a curve is the peak of a curve. Apex. How you interpret, how you draw a corner from a curve. So a curve does this, right? Eventually, the curve, there's a point where a curve does change direction, even though it's a curve. This curve 
right? Goes up, 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 and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right. Eventually, it'll go down. You see it? It doesn't always go up. It goes down at some point. Where does that go down? Well, it's roughly here, right? Eventually, it stops and then goes down. That point is called the apex of a curve. So when you encounter something curvy like this chin, you want to look for the apex. Now, the bottom of the chin itself doesn't quite have a strong one, but the shadow shape does. This little shadow shape has a clear apex. I don't know if you see it, but it's right here. So that's why I interpreted that corner to be there. Okay, so that took a little bit of skill. So now, how do we get from here? <laughs> how do we interpret this stuff? Does he draw the corner for us? Yes and no. Yes and no, he does. It is quite interesting how he does it. There's a couple ways to interpret it. Let's take a look at that now. Number one, value and brush strokes, right? So you see this really bright shape of value. This is a highlight. The light is coming from here. And you see how it eventually this little area is darker. You see it? This is bright. This is darker. You see the obvious corner? That's a nice clear corner. So let's take advantage of that. So that's one way. It's an easy one for us to interpret. And another way is the same thing, but in the mouth. If we look at this shadow shape he drew in the mouth, at the bottom of the mouth, notice that this shadow shape has an edge. It eventually ends, right? And it's, it's not super sharp. It's a little bit fuzzy and rounded and mottled because it's, it's a painting of a young girl. So you don't want to chisel a young girl's face. You want to make her feel soft and young and youthful. So there is a border. Do you see it? There is a border. There is a border. There is a border to the shadow shape, but he softens it. And that border is roughly here. So now we got a nice line. We have sort of a line at the front. You see that this uh, bit of blush or this pink on the cheek? You see it? That too has a border because that is essentially this thing. It's essentially a bit of a shadow shape or it's half tone, but he drew it in bold color in this pink. See, that has a shape. Where that shape ends, it ends because that is a corner. That is where the front of the face changes direction to become the side of the face. So now we got a point. We got a point. We have a corner. We have a point. We have a point. So what do we do? Just like way back in first grade, we connect the dots. Boom, boom, boom. And it's that simple, my friends. What else? The eyes we know are easy, easy money. Easy for us to interpret. Clear corner here. Clear corner in the contour. Is the nose boxy? You sure it is. But again, just like, just like we saw with uh, Cornwell and Sarge, he made it more subtle. You see this bit of orange on the nose and the, bit, the highlight at the side, that is a corner. And the, the underplane is very obvious. He put a strong, straight highlight. It's almost perfectly straight. You see how the nose is very chiseled and boxy? That is not an accident. That is something we can put in our work. So there it is, my friends. And that's really all you got to do. All you got to do to learn construction is really pay attention. Well, first, you have to choose good masters. And then once you have that, pay attention to what you're looking for. If you're looking for boxes, pay attention to where the artist draws straight lines, where the artist makes straight-ish brushstrokes, where the artist makes corners. All of those things are clues for you to interpret.
And just like before, I would also do a tracing construction drawing here just so we can get the understanding. And in fact, I'll do it now because I just, I love this drawing so much. I love this painting so much. In fact, I did a, um, I don't know where it is, but uh, I did a, uh, a master copy oil painting of this painting. I did several of John Asaro's back in the day. So take your tracing paper and you know, you don't have to do this on the computer. In fact, it's, it's more fun to do on real paper. So what we're gonna do is basically trace construction. We're gonna try to analyze, we're gonna try to draw a construction line, make a construction drawing on top of John Asaro. This one's very clear and easy. Right away we want, I'm gonna call it, vertical and horizontal center. And, you know, if you're familiar with my work at all, you'll start to see like, holy cow, uh, everything Chris talks about, he stole from these guys. <laughs> I go, yep, that's exactly what I just said. <laughs> I mean, you could literally teach yourself this stuff if you spend enough time analyzing old masters with, but you kind of need to know how. That does, does help. And do not, like I said, if, if you have any negative idea about tracing, I think you should get that out of your head uh, immediately. That is that's just, it's just hurting you. It's like having a negative idea of dishwashers. Uh, of washing laundry machines, you know, it's just it's just a thing that makes your life a little easier. That's all it is. You can be a terrible artist and trace, and you'll still have a terrible drawing. So <laughs> it doesn't really help you that much, actually. Uh, tracing only really help in this way, the way that I do it. It's really just a tool for a skilled artist to save a little bit of time, and um, in this case. We're using tracing as a means to study from an artist, from an expert that we don't have access to. If we had this, if we had access to this man, we could get even better results by doing construction drawings with him in the classroom. Obviously, that's that's the ideal. But we don't have that luxury, especially with artists who are who are long deceased. We don't have that luxury. I have to draw the top of her, the corner of her, what's your medilli? Her skull, <laughs> her cranium. I have to draw this corner from imagination because it's cut off in the painting, but that's okay. That's practice for us. And you can go as deep of the construction model as you as you want. You can go the full Riley model. Whatever is obvious, really, that's at this stage. Whatever is obvious. But for this particular lesson, I was more concerned about communicating the corners of things. And we can also look at alignments. Does this align? Oh, sh oh wow. His alignments do <laughs> coincide with everything that I talk about. And I think that's about it as far as the construction from Saro here, excuse me. And don't forget the neck as a cylinder. The neck is a cylinder. It's not a flat thing. It's not an abstract thing. It's a cylinder. It's a construction form just like the face.
So that's what I would do. And, you know, obviously, um, if you're learning head drawing, if you're new, if you want to get better quickly, you know, I would do these until my head exploded. I literally did, like I say, I did at least two master copies every day for two years. Are you prepared to do that? How badly do you want it? How badly do you want it? Are you prepared to do something that's not that fun? For me, it was fun, but um, it may not be fun for you or you may not think it's valuable. I hope I tried to sell you on the value of this process because, um, like I said, I didn't invent I didn't invent European realism. I'm just part of the chain. I'm handing it down to you. You could take it or leave it. You can respect it or not respect it. You can appreciate it or not appreciate it. But master copy is just a part of the process. It's just one part of the process. I hope I got across how valuable this process is. And um, if you want to learn a skill quickly, to learn a skill properly, you need an expert's advice. It's just no other way around it. And one way to do that is to study their work. If you can't meet them in person, just study their work on a deep, deep analytical level like this. And uh, you'll be good to go. And obviously, you don't want to stop at three. We did, we did three. You don't want to just do one and then never do them again. You want to do them until you fully understand what the heck, what the heck they're trying, to, what, what they're saying until you understand what it is that you need to get across in your own work.